As always, if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up, um, share, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and leave a comment. Let's get into it, because I know people don't like long intros. The solar wind streams plasma and particles from the sun out into space, though the wind is constant properties aren't. What causes this stream, and how does it affect the earth? Windy star, the corona, the sun's outer layer, reaches temperatures of up to 2 million degrees Fahrenheit, or 1.1 million degrees Celsius. At this level, the sun's gravity can't hold on to the rapidly moving particles, and it streams away from the star. The sun's activity shifts over the course of its 11-year cycle, with sunspot numbers, radiation levels, and ejected material changing over time. These alterations affect the properties of the solar wind, including its magnetic field properties, velocity, temperature, and density. The wind also differs based on where the sun it comes from and how quickly the portion is rotating. The velocity of the solar wind is higher over coronal holes, reaching speeds of up to 500 miles or 800 kilometers per second. The temperature and density over coronal holes are low, and the magnetic field is weak. So the field... So the field lines are open to space. These holes occur at the poles and low latitudes, and reach their largest when activity on the sun is at its minimum. Temperatures in the fast wind can reach up to 1 million degrees Fahrenheit, or 800,000 degrees Celsius. At the coronal st streamer belt around the equator, the solar wind travels more slowly at around 200 miles, or 300 kilometers per second. Temperatures in the slow wind reach up to 2.9 million degrees Fahrenheit, or 1.6 million degrees Celsius. Affecting Earth as the wind travels off the sun, it carries charged particles and magnetic clouds emitted in all directions. Some of the solar wind is constantly buffeting our planet with interesting effects. If the material carried by the solar wind 
touched a planet's surface, its radiation would do severe damage to any life that might exist. Earth's magnetic field serves as a shield, redirecting the material around the planet so that it streams beyond it. The force of the wind stretches out the magnetic field so that it is smushed inward on the sun side and stretched out on the night side. Sometimes the sun spits out large bursts of plasma known as coronal mass ejections or solar storms. More common during the active period of the cycle, known as the solar maximum. CMEs, or coronal mass ejections, have a stronger effect than the standard solar wind. When the solar wind carries CMEs and other powerful bursts of radiation into a planet's magnetic field, it can cause the magnetic field on the back side to press together, a process known as magnetic reconnection. Charged particles then stream back toward the planet's magnetic poles causing beautiful displays known as the aurora borealis in the upper atmosphere. Though some bodies are shielded by a magnetic field, others lack their protection. Earth's moon has nothing to protect it, so it takes the full brunt. Mercury, the closest planet, has a magnetic field that shields it from the regular standard wind, but it takes the full force of more powerful outbursts, such as CMEs. When the high and low speed streams interact with one another, they create dense regions known as co-rotating interactions, or interaction regions. CIRS or CIRs that trigger geomagnetic storms when they interact with Earth's atmosphere. And how we study the solar wind. NASA's Ulysses mission launched on October 6th, 1990 studied the sun at various latitudes. It measured the various properties of the solar wind over the course of more than a dozen years. The Advanced Composition Explorer, or ACE, A-C-E, satellite orbits at one of the special points between Earth and the sun, known as the Lagrange Point. In, the air, in this area, gravity from the sun and the planet pull equally, keeping the satellite in a stable orbit. Launched in 1997, ACE measures the solar wind and provides real-time measurements of the constant flow of particles. And that is all I have for today's solar wind video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know that uh, sometimes people like different videos, but I just was in the mood for space-themed ones, so um, that's what I wanted to do. Anyways, I will see you again soon. I'm still kind of busy, so that's why the videos have been a little short and no gameplay, but don't worry, I will eventually get back to gameplay, and the length of the videos will go back up again. Uh, just give me some time and stick with me. 
I will see you again on Friday for Facts Friday. I hope that you will come back and check it out. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet, but hopefully 